Hello, I'm recapping my um, SHP1 amplifier, which is different than the SPH3 amplifier. This is the earlier model. Anyway, this one has the original um, electrolytic capacitors in many areas, so I was recapping it. Specifically, the two big caps that are right here and here, which stick out the top, um, big blue paper caps. My ESR meter, uh, which is an indispensable piece of equipment, indicated that both of them uh, had a very high ESR, which meant they uh, are bad. Obviously, they're paper caps, so I'm replacing those, and I've already replaced all the uh, other lytic capacitors uh, on the preamp and the driver boards. So I replaced these four here already, and on the uh, driver board. I replaced uh, all the big ones as well. So now I'm focusing on replacing the, the very large ones in the chassis. This is a, a 3300 UF 35V and uh, getting ready to solder. So I clipped the lead and the lead is over on this uh, edge here which actually touched the chassis, that's the negative lead. So I clipped one lead off of there. And now I have alligator clipped it onto my negative lead, that's the negative sign there. And so now I'm going to solder that leg before I cut the other one because there's no confusion whatsoever. So I got my solder iron here. I got my solder. And uh, we'll go ahead and solder this on. So, just a little information here to start recapping. Obviously, if you've got a uh, Seberg SHP amp, uh, this is a very good investment. This is about $100. I borrowed it from someone else. Uh, tells me exactly what the issues are and know what to replace but I just ended up replacing the caps because you know I'm getting these radial ones and they're very inexpensive and they're all pretty good this is a uh, pretty easy endeavor once you get used to it and just to let you know I um, I'm trying to keep track so I've kind of made this spreadsheet here on Excel it gives me the uh, information to keep track of which the part number they are and what the uh, original specifications are, what I replaced it with, what date, I'm able to track it that way. So, anyway, hope that helps you if you're a, a novice at doing this like I am. Alright, so now I have welded one of the legs, the, uh, the negative here, onto my new capacitor. And just to let you know, I'm using this heat shrink tubing. I put it on ahead of time. Uh, very important. I cut about, I don't know, an inch and a half piece of it and stuck it down. You can see it kind of sitting underneath. So once this solder joint is done, I can then slide the tubing up and I can use a hair dryer to uh, shrink it in place. There'll be no exposed wire there to short out this very large, important capacitor. Because the old capacitors are physically riveted in down here, I'm just going to leave the old ones sitting up on top uh, and not mess with them. Because if I do, I take them out, and I've got to figure out what to do with this big hole that's been sitting in my amp. Oh, by the way, I'm only doing one at a time. I'm only cutting one at a time because I want to make sure that I do not, in any way, get my polarity mixed up because it's the negative. I'm going to be doing the positive next. All right, so I borrowed a Atlas ESR model ESR 60 meter from my brother. This thing is an indispensable tool. It costs you about a hundred bucks right now. So I'm glad he let me borrow it. And so I'm recapping my amps as needed. These are uh, Seberg SHP amps. This one's an, uh, an SHP1 and that's an SHP3. Uh, this is a newer model. That's the, the last one they made. Uh, just to let you know, I 
don't want to replace all the capacitors that I don't need to. Somebody before has replaced capacitors, so I don't replace the ones they've replaced. They're still good. And so how do you know how what, if it's a good rec capacitor? Well, the, the meter tells you. So, for instance, the uh, two really big capacitors that look like that on this one, uh, when I turn on my ESR meter, it's hooked up to the probes here, which are actually the bottom of that on this one. It says open circuit or low capacitance, which means basically this capacitor is shot. So that one has to be replaced. And since I'm replacing one, I'm going to replace both of them. And so those really big honking capacitors are replaced with these little guys, which are very inexpensive. So I've gone ahead and I've cut these ones out and uh, gone ahead and soldered in the replacements for here. Just a word of advice. Uh, when you do it, make sure you put some heat shrink tubing on ahead of time because uh, you want to be able to just keep those from touching. I'm probably going to get some tie wraps and try and tie these down a bit so they're not just sitting out in the open. Uh, these other three big capacitors, I actually checked uh, using the ESR meter and all three of them are pretty good. So because it's very difficult to find uh, replacements for these since these are non-polarized 1500s which were they don't make these anymore um, since these sprigs are still good I'm going to go ahead and leave those in it but I went ahead on this one and on the driver board and the preamp board I replaced all the major caps so all these ones here are now uh, new ones and uh, handed here is not fun. And I replaced just these four on this one as well. The uh, tantalums were still good on that so the ESR meter so they were well within specs so I didn't bother to replace those. So now that I'm done with that everything is replaced. Before I ever plug it in I'm going to use my dim bulb tester and this is something I just made uh, a lot of people told me about so I made one using spare parts and all it is is uh, basically a, uh, a light bulb and a switch and a, an outlet so I, I plug this in and then I plug my amplifier into this and if it works the right way this light bulb should just come on for just very dim for a second and then go out so I'll let you know how that works out. Alright, so I've replaced the capacitors before I ever even think about putting my amplifier back into my jukebox. I want to check it and make sure I did it right. And I've double checked make sure my polarity is correct. Uh, but I'm going to use this thing called a dim bulb tester that I made. And if the light bulb just goes on briefly then goes off, we'll know it's good. On your mark, get set, go. Yep. See, I just barely glowing. Barely glowing. Yep. I did it right. Good deal. I'm going to plug it in and see how this baby sounds in my uh, Seaberg jukebox. Alright, just a quick last shot to show you that I secured both of these big capacitors in here. I uh, used the heat shrink over the open legs. I used a little bit of blue electrical tape just to keep it in place and then I used some tie wraps to tie them together and then I used another tie wrap to kind of tie them off underneath this block here, this terminal block. So basically they can sit there and not come out and not get touched by anybody. And yeah, Not pretty but uh, certainly will do the job. So now it's time to put this unit back in my jukebox.